Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about the before update event, how to use it to cancel editing a specific field under certain conditions. Today's question comes from Michaela in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. That's a mouthful. One of my gold members. Michaela says, I watched your input box video a few days ago. That was awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any way to just password protect a few specific fields on a form instead of the whole form? I want everybody to be able to see fields like credit limit. She changed it. It was something else, but I'm, I'm going to substitute it with credit limit. But I only want managers to be able to edit them if they're locked. Okay, if you haven't watched the video she's referring to, go watch this first. It's my input box video. I show you how to add a button, a manager menu button on the main menu, and then you're asked for a manager password, and if you give the password correctly, the manager menu opens up, and then you can use that to open up other forms. What Michaela is saying is she doesn't want the whole form to be password protected, just a field or two, specific fields, that once the manager locks them, then you can still see what they are, but you can't edit them yourself without the manager password. I also want you to watch my after update video. Now, after update happens after a field is updated. Before update happens before it's updated, and it gives you the ability to cancel. That's what we're going to be doing today. But go watch after update first because it's easier to understand. All right, so go watch that and then come on back. Now, while you're at it, while you're on my website, go watch this video too. It's called Gray Out Fields. I show you how to gray out or disable different fields based on certain conditions. So, for example, if the customer is marked inactive, it grays out certain stuff like family size, customer sense, credit limit, and so on. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to take the stuff from the gray out fields and the stuff from the input box. We're going to take all those different Lego pieces and put them together with something new called Before Update. And we're going to have a new Lego toy we can play with. All right, let's go see how it works. Okay, so the first thing I need is a way to indicate if this user, if this customer is locked. So we're going to put an is locked field in the customer table. Is locked. Yes, no. Default is no. Now, I have to preface this by saying that, as with everything else with Microsoft Access, if your user knows what they're doing, they can get into the tables if your database is not properly secured. So this will stop the average looky-loo okay, the average normal computer user, but if someone knows Access and they know how to get to the back-end tables, this won't keep them out of that. The only way to do that for sure is to either encrypt your tables, as I show in my encryption seminar, or use a database server like SQL Server. We'll talk more about security toward the end of the video. Okay, so we've got a field now. Let's put that field on the customer form. And I'm going to move this guy over here. We'll get our I like to put all my checkboxes together. All right, so here's my is active. Let's copy this one. Copy, paste, control C, control V. Let's call this is locked. Is locked. Is locked. There we go. Open up its properties. We'll change this to is locked. And we'll also change the name. Don't forget, change the name too. All right, change the control source, change the name. Save the tree leader, save the world. Okay. So now, when this guy is changed, I want to lock, let's say, customer sense and credit limit. Okay. So let's open up this guy's properties. And we're going to go to the after update event. After I change this, I want to lock those two fields. And in fact, instead of using locked, I'm gonna use enabled. I like enabled better sometimes because it, it visually grays it out. We talked about this in the, uh, the graying out stuff video. So we're gonna say if is locked, then customer sense dot enabled equals false. And then credit limit dot enabled equals false. Otherwise, we're gonna reverse that. Always remember to reverse it because if you don't, then it never unenables. <laughs> All right. Okay. So save that. Now, if I come back in here, open it up. All right. Check it. It locks them. See? Now you can't even click on them. Uncheck it. Unlocks. Right? Check. Uncheck. Uncheck. Check. Uncheck. All right. Really straight. Really straight. Okay. So that happens when the user changes it. Now, I also need to take that into consideration when I move from record to record or when I first open the form. That, as we know, is the on current event. 
And that was one of the prerequisites for the Gray Out Fields video. And if you didn't watch all the prerequisite videos, then you don't know what this is. So that's why I tell you, go watch all the other videos and tell you to watch before this one. <laughs> you got all that? Okay. And that's why I teach my courses in order so I don't have to make you bounce around to different videos. It's all taught in the developer lessons, right? One, two, three, four, and so on. Okay, so what we need to do is go into here. And we're going to go back into the code for this form. And this stuff here has to also run when I move from record to record. But I don't want to duplicate that. I don't want copies of my code in multiple places, right? So I'm going to snip that out, cut, okay? And I'm going to make my own private subroutine, private sub. We're going to call this uh, do locks. And I'm going to paste that code in there. Now, this guy can just say do locks or check locks or whatever you want to call it. And we also have to put it in the forms on current event. So go to form, and then over here, current. Now that's the forms current event. And right in here, you put two locks. See, let me get rid of this form low, that stuff that pops in there too. Okay, so now you can see the form current and the after update event for is locked are both going to run do locks, which is this stuff. All right, we don't want duplicated code in our database. All right, save that. Close it, close it, come back out here. Let's lock it. Let's go away from it. Okay, that one's not locked. Let's go back to it now. And now it's locked. Okay, that's looking good so far. Now, let's take the password into consideration. All right, if this is locked, then I can't unlock it without the password. Right, anybody can lock it. Well, I mean, that's up to you. You might want to have your manager as the only one that can lock it too. But let's, let's, let's say for the purposes of the class that... Anyone can lock it. Like you type in some, let's say you're, you're putting in a credit app, right? You're done with it. You lock it. And then only a manager now can unlock that. Okay. So let's go into here. Let's go into your properties. Let's find your before update event. All right. Now, after update happens after you make a change to the field and it's saved to the table and it's done. All right. There's, that's it. It's committed to the table. Before update happens after you've typed in your change, but before access actually commits that change to the table. In other words, it gives you the opportunity to say, well, let me check on some other stuff here and make sure everything's okay and kosher before I actually save that value. All right, so if you go into the dot, dot, dot now, you'll see I'm in is locked before update and there's a cancel option. If you set that cancel to anything but zero, it's canceled. It's an integer, so really it's wanting a, a one or a zero. Uh, I like to think of this as a Boolean because it just makes more sense, so I send it a true or a false. Uh, that's a, a weird, dirty point. Don't even worry about that. Just use true or false. <laughs> so I'm going to first say, if is locked, then exit sub. What does that mean? Well, if it's already unlocked, then let them lock it. All right? This is the value after you click it. All right, so I click it, and now it's locked. If it's locked already, exit out. We're good. Anybody can lock it, okay? But if it comes in here and now it's locked, or now they're trying to unlock it, <laughs> then I want to check the password. Now, this is where the stuff from the password lesson comes in, from the input box. All right, dim s as a string. We're going to come down here, and we're going to say if, uh, if uh, we're going to say s equals input box, pa enter the password, right? All the other crazy stuff you want to put in there from the input box lesson. If S is not whatever the password is, find that NCD, then cancel equals true. We're going to cancel it and exit sub and then end if. Okay, so they check the box and now it's locked. Exit sub. Nothing else to do. But if they check the box and now it's unlocked, they're attempting to unlock it. Ask them for a password. Check the password. If the password is not correct, cancel this and exit out, and the value will stay locked. All right, save it. Come back out here. Let's shut her down. Open it back up again. All right, now this one is locked. Let's try to unlock it. Oh, what's your password? Let's put in something wrong. And it aborted, and it came right back out here. All right, let's go to a different record. Let's lock this one. Okay, we're good. Let's lock. Let's try to unlock it now. Oh, it's your password. Let's type in the right password. And now it let us unlock that record. Yeah, that works. And that's it. That's pretty straightforward, right? What, we got like six lines of code? Not that hard.
And of course, some other stuff to talk about. If you want the uh, the stars on your input box, right? The asterisks. That's the extended cut for the members, where I show you how to put the little thingies in here, where they give you stars when you type it in, right? There's also the matter of security, of course. Watch my simple security video to lock down your database eh, decently enough to keep most people's out of it, right? Most looky loos that don't really know access. Of course, if you want true security. Then I do show you some better tricks in my security seminar. The only way to truly have secure data, though, is to use a database server like SQL Server. I've got some online SQL Server training available, but I've got a real uh, on-premises SQL Server seminar that I'm working on right now, in fact. I do have a data encryption seminar, however, if you only have a couple of bits of information, a couple of fields maybe in your table that you want to scramble so that your end users, even if they do find your tables your backend database, then the data inside it looks like gibberish if they download your tables, for example, if you don't want to use a database server. But that's pretty much it for today. That's how before update works. Before update says, hey, before I actually save this change, right, I want to check and make sure something else is, 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 is right. Some other condition, some other variable, some input like a password. Now, there also is a form level before update event that runs for the whole form. So the user can change a bunch of different stuff and you can run a before update on the form and check like other data on a table or on a different form. That's gonna be a different video, of course. <laughs> and if you wanna learn more about before update, I do cover it in a lot more detail in my Access Developer Level 24 class. And this is actually a pretty popular one. This one I cover copying a record with all of its details. So for example, if you want to copy an order, it'll copy the order record and all of the detail records as well, all the related child records. So Developer 24 is a pretty cool class. Okay, that's it for your fast tip today. I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters.
Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.